Hello everyone, this is Avi Varshni, programmer from FTC 5773, and welcome to the second video in this series for Robot C programming for NXT and Tetrix. So um, let's start off by going ahead and opening up Robot C and let that open up. And now uh, we're just going to go ahead and open up our file from the last tutorial that we went over. So let's just go ahead and open up our other file. Just do Control O or File Open, whichever whichever one you prefer. Navigate to the file and open it up, and there we go. Okay. So in the last video, <clears throat> so in the last video, I covered all of the Pragma configuration, motors and sensor setup. I went over the joystick driver .c header file, the initialized robot function, and the task main function. And the wait for start. So you should have a basic understanding of what everything does. Um, in this video, we will be going over how to make, how to drive your robot using the joysticks in the basic tank drive style. Okay. So let's go ahead and go up to the void initialize robot function and click enter. So we're on the first line. So in the NXT Tetrix set obviously there's a command to move the motors and that command is very simple the command is simply motor brackets equals to the motor value and then just a uh, semicolon and so what motor does is you write the command motor and then you specify which motor you want to move and then you specify the value or at what power you want to move the motor so as we remember we have our left drive and our right drive motors so let's say we want to move our left drive motor so motor left drive so the syntax is motor opening bracket name so left drive closing bracket is equal to the value now since we're going to be initializing the robot and we're not actually going to want the robot to move let's set the value to zero now for motors the value can go all the way from negative 100 all the way to positive 100. Negative 100 me meaning that it moves backwards at 100 power. Positive meaning it moves forward at 100 power. So let's go ahead and set the motor left drive to not move at all. Okay, now we've done that for the left one, but what about the right? We want to do the same thing. So let's uh, do it again. Motor, opening bracket, specify your motor, right drive is equal to the value. Let's make the value zero because once again, we don't want it to move. So there. Now when you init now when the initialize function, the initialize robot function is run, both motors, left and right drive, will be set to zero, so they do not move at all. This is one way of writing it. There is also another easier way, in which we do motor left drive is equal to motor right drive, which is equal to zero. Now if you don't understand how this works, I'll explain it, but you should already know because it's a basic C kind of thing. You can set variables equal to each other as long as you specify the value at the end. Or even you can set variables, like I can set A equal to B, or I can do A equals B, which is equal to C. And C could be 0 or 100 or whatever. It's a basic thing for programming. Okay. Now, the only difference between this method and this method is, and this one, it's more accurate for the based on the time so and see um, when they run the code of course it's run line by line so you're first setting left drive and then right drive now there is a very 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 minuscule delay between the lines it's not very big but there is a delay so if you don't want any delay and you want to make it as accurate as possible just go ahead and do this one okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these actually you know I'm just gonna comment them out double slash remember that very important so now we're setting both of our motors to not drive at all okay so that finishes the initialize robot function let's move on to tax task main so inside your while loop <clears throat> you wanna go ahead and go in the while loop okay so now to actually move our robot we're gonna be using joysticks and as you should all pr already know all of the joysticks give out values when you press certain buttons and move the certain analog joysticks. 
So we want to first be able to obtain those values, which we can then assign to the motors. So how do we obtain those values? That's done with a very simple command called get joystick settings. There, get joystick setting, get joystick settings. And yes, this is a function, and so you want to put the parentheses in the semicolon. Now, this function does take a parameter, and that parameter is simply joystick. So what this means is we're going to run the function get joystick settings, and it's going to get the values of what we specify, the joystick. And for joystick, it means both joysticks, one and two. You might only be using one, you might only be using two, but it'll get it for both. So you don't have to worry about putting it twice. So it's going to run this function, get joystick settings with a joystick. So it's going to get all the values of all the buttons that are being pressed or even not being pressed, all the joysticks that are being moved or not moved. So let's say you press a button and then it gives a value of 1. You don't press it, it gives a value of 0. Okay, that's how you manipulate, that's how you manipulate the values and the uh, joystick. So once we get those values, we want to actually assign them to our motors. So if we go back up here, we remember the command motor, assign your motor, and set it to the value. Okay, but now we can, uh, we can assign the value directly because um, for every joystick or button, there's a specific command for it. But we're going to do it a little easier way. Okay, since this is going to be a tank drive robot, the x axis. Um, the left joystick for the uh, controller one is going to be controlling the left side of the robot. And the right joystick of the first controller is going to control the right side of the robot. And that's how a tank drive works. One joystick controls one, one joystick controls the other. So for those joysticks, we're going to be using the Y value. That means moving the joysticks up and down. And that's kind of for... Um, making an easier drive because I mean if you're using the x-axis it'd be kind of hard you know like pushing them one direction to go left pushing them like another direction to go right it'd be really weird so going back and forth is a lot easier now we want to get the value of that um, left joystick y value so let's go ahead and assign some uh, variables so under initialized robot let's assign some floating point variables and the reason I'm doing floating point variables is because later on we're going to be working with um, values in which we're going to be dividing it, multiplying it by certain decimal points. So let's just keep it at flow for right now. Now we're going to be making two values. One for the left y-axis and one for the right y-axis. The left y-axis for the jo left joystick and the right y-axis for the right joysticks. So let's go ahead and do left y-axis, comma, right y-axis, okay? So now we have assigned our two, we've get, we've declared our two variables, which are floating point variables. Now we're going to assign the values. So let's do left y axis is equal to, okay, this next part is very important, okay. Now, to access the values for the left y axis of joystick 1 is this command, joystick dot joy1 underscore y1 what this means is look at the joystick and the joystick we declared up here uh, it's gonna get the settings from the joystick so look at the settings from the joystick and go to and go to the very first joystick which means joystick controller one okay now as you know in FTC there's two controllers for the first and the second uh, person controlling the robot joy one means the first controller and joy 2, so like joy 2, would mean the second controller. Okay, so we're going to look at the joystick values, joystick number 1, and we're going to look at y1. Underscore is just there, and then you put whatever axes you want. Okay, y obviously means the y axes, and if you were to put it with an x, it means the x axes. Now for the controllers, y1 is always the left side and y2 is always the right side so if i were to do um get joystick uh look at the values for joystick one look at the values for joystick one y2 i would be referring to the right side or the right joystick but since it's one i'm referring to the left joystick now if i were to do x1 it would refer to the x axis of the left joystick if i were to do two x axis of the right joystick so it's it's kind of obvious to figure it out. So let's go with Y1, okay? 
Now we want to do the same for the right y-axis value. So right y-axis is equal to joystick dot joy one because we're still in controller one underscore y two because now we want the y-axis for the right side. So now we've done that. Now we can actually go ahead and assign these values to our motors. So let's do motor left drive is equal to the left y-axis. Same for the right. Motor right drive is equal to the right y-axis. Okay, so go ahead and save that. And that's pretty much it, believe it or not. That's all you need to have a basic tank drive robot. Once you have this set, let's go ahead and check the code. Now, how you check the code is you simply press function 7. What that will do is uh, do a quick compile of the program and give you any errors. As you can see, when I, when I right click it, there's no errors here at the bottom. So that means I'm all the codes right. Now, if you don't, if you do some for some weird reason don't have the function 7 key, just go to uh, robot compile program. Okay. Once we have that, we can upload our program. Before we upload our program, we want to make sure NXT is connected. Now, to make sure your NXT is connected, you want to go under Robot, NXT Brick, Communication Link Setup. Now, currently, I don't have my NXT connected, but if I did, under Search select, search Selection, you would just, just go ahead and do USB and do, yeah, actually, you want to just click all three and just do Repeat Search. And up here in this box on the very top left where it says NXT brick currently connected via USB um, or even on the, any of these two boxes, your NXT would pop up. Once it pops up, just go ahead and click on it once so it's highlighted, like an example like right here, and just go ahead and click select. Okay. Um, once it's selected, it should, uh, it'll, just, it mo no, it'll just be selected. And then just go ahead and click close. And then... Okay, hold on, you guys. Sorry about that. And then once it's connected, you just want to go ahead and upload your program. Now, to upload your program, you simply click Function 5 or F5. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can do Robot, Compile, and Download Program, So, which is F5. So it'll just compile your program and upload it to your NXT. I'm not going to do it because I don't have, an, obviously, I don't have an NXT connected. So once it's uploaded, now you actually want to use those joysticks to drive your robot. So now for the next step, make sure your NXT is on and your US and the USB port is daisy chained, daisy chained to your um, uh, motor and servo controllers, and make sure your Tetrix set is on. Once everything is on and you see all the red lights and it's good to go, go ahead and do robot NXT brick joystick control FTC. So this will open up a menu like this, okay? What you want to do is you want to go ahead and click dual joysticks always. It doesn't matter if you're using one or two joysticks, just do dual. Because this means you have a controller one and a controller two, okay? Now, once your code is uploaded, you want to go under Teleop program name and you want to click this and you actually want to select your program, okay? I don't have anything uploaded, so I can't really do it. But whatever you name your program, just go ahead and select that, okay? And so this is a Teleop code, you want to... Uh, do tally off ready then running and then make sure a uh, joystick is connected so once you have your uh, program name chosen under primary ga game controller go ahead and select your joystick since I don't have anything connected I'm just gonna leave it but just do reflect refresh list and you should have one connected okay and at the bottom here it actually tells you your axes and what values are giving and your button values so once your joysticks connected Go ahead and click Teleop Ready, and this will then run the initialize function. And then the robot's not waiting at the wait for start. Once you click Teleop Running, the wait for start will run, and then the while loop will be jumped into. Once you have tele once you have clicked Teleop Running and everything's on, go ahead and give your joysticks a wiggle. So go ahead and give, give your left and right joysticks a wiggle up and down. If you see a robot moving, that's good. That means you've got it working. It's perfect. Um, so with this, that's pretty much all you really need to do. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Now, you will see that when you move your left joystick, the robot moves up for forward and down for back. But when you move the right joystick, if you push your joystick up, the robot moves back. Moves back. And if you press the joystick down, the robot moves up. There's a simple fix. There's two ways. Either, when you're specifying the value, you can just go ahead and put a negative sign, so it inverses it. 
Or you can do the smart way. You can go to Robot, Motors and Sensor Setup. Under Motors, simply click Reverse the Reverse button under right, okay? So this will automatically reverse the values coming in from the joysticks for you. Just click OK. And now, go ahead and do Robot, NXT Brick, Joystick Control FTC, okay, Dual, Teleop Ready, and Running. And go ahead and give your joysticks a wiggle, and you should see it working. So there you go. That's pretty much it. So let's go over everything one more time. The command for running your motors is motor, left, bra left opening bracket, your motor name, which is left drive here, your closing bracket, which is equal to your value. And in this case, our value is going to be equal to the right motor, which is then equal to zero. So we don't want our robot to move. Next, we're declaring two variables, which are floating point variables, left and right y axes. Next, we use get joystick settings to obtain all of the values from the joystick. And we're going to be obtaining values, but from what? We want to obtain those values from the joysticks, so we specify the parameter joystick. Make sure you always have this line, otherwise you're not going to really get any values back. It's just me, not even moving at all. <clears throat> so once you have that, we're going to be assigning our left y-axis, the value of joystick 1 or controller number 1, the y-axis 1, which is pretty much the up and down movements for the left joystick. For the right y-axis, we're then... We're then um, giving it the value of joystick 1 or controller 1, y-axis 2, or the up and down movements for the right joystick. Then we're just assigning our motor left drive, left y-axis, and our motor right drive, the right y-axis. That's pretty much it. That's all you really need to know. So go ahead and give that a go. Do, F5, do F7, then F5, then go to Robot, NXT Break, Joystick Control, FTC, and try it out. And you should have a working robot. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I'm trying to keep it small, short, and simple so you guys can kind of get everything and not get all confused. Um, so go ahead and yeah, that's it. So make sure you go ahead and check out our website. Uh, it's hsrobotics.biz. And also, if you don't really like video tutorials but you're more of a text-based kind of guy, go ahead and check out my uh, personal website. It's called hs. FTC5773.info and there you'll find a full section of a text-based tutorials and I'm actually even coming out with a GUI which you guys can kind of just download an application uh, to see all the tutorials through that okay so thank you guys for watching and that's it bye